Hi, Mr. Heffern here, and here's a, uh, a video on the force of friction. So you have two kinds of friction, you have static friction and kinetic friction. Here's that car drifting using both types of friction. Okay, so what is friction? Uh, friction occurs when two surfaces are in contact, and it is a resistance force that one surface or object encounters when moving over another. So it's actually trillions of tiny microscopic electric repulsions that accumulate to form a visible macroscopic force. There are two types of friction. Static, which is used for traction, grip, and propulsion, or acceleration. And we got kinetic, which is used to slow things down when they're sliding. And it always opposes the instantaneous velocity. So here we got uh, an example of static friction. This um, car is using static friction to accelerate forward. And here we got kinetic friction where this car is uh, sliding to a stop. Okay, so static versus friction, not kinetic. Static friction allows us to move by providing grip and traction. Static friction must also be stronger than kinetic friction or we would always be slipping and sliding uncontrollably all the time. Kinetic friction only occurs when sliding or slipping is occurring and it opposes velocity and tries to slow us down. Also, once you do lose your static friction and get kinetic friction, it's, it's difficult to switch back. So if you're ever falling down a hill, you want to lift your legs up and plant your feet and get some static friction back. So here we got uh, static friction climbing a hill. And like I said, if you ever do start to slide, plant your feet or dig your pole in or whatever, and get some static friction. And here we got some kinetic friction, uh, which is opposing um, gravity to uh, keep the person from going too fast. So, safety application. Since static friction is stronger than kinetic friction, um, this is why we have anti-lock brake systems, or ABS, in our vehicles these days. Okay, so this will help us slow down more quickly and also more safely. So when the computer sensor detects slipping, the brake releases for an instant to re-establish static friction. This happens several times per second and reduces the stopping distance significantly. Also, ABS allows drivers some degree of steering control they would normally not have. And I do recall when I started driving, I didn't have ABS, and if I ever hit the brakes, I would lose control and my car would swing around and do crazy things. And uh, when I got ABS, it was great. I could actually steer while braking. And uh, you'll also see uh, that you'll have these these little like um, skids with, with gaps between them. This is because the ABS is going on and off. Okay, so you get some more control, and you also stop much, much more quickly. Okay, so what is friction? Let's take a look at the atoms here. So if you take a look at the macroscopic picture right here, we got some static friction to propel the shoot forward on this grass. What happens in the microscopic view? So if we zoom in down here, so here we got this uh, brown wiggly line. This is what flat looks like uh, under a microscope. It looks very unflat, very jagged valleys and mountains. Okay, and everything is made of atoms, and of course atoms are made out of protons, which are positive, neutrons, which are neutral, have no effect, and electrons, which are negative, in orbits around the atoms, like the nucleus. Okay, so what happens is the proton in the shoe gets too close to the proton in the grass, and they repel each other. Positives repel each other, so it uh, keeps them, basically, your shoe levitates above the grass. Now the electrons, they also repel each other. So what happens is this electron may get jumped up to a high energy orbit, and then the proton will uh, bring it back down. So this is going to cause a disturbance where you're going to have some negativeness go over here and then come back. And this will release a photon, a, a particle of light, maybe invisible light, like infrared, which we usually call heat. And uh, so you're going to have uh, positives and negatives, north and south, and you get this photon, this, uh, this radiation coming off from the friction. Okay, so how about uh, kinetic friction? So in this case, you want the shoe going in the opposite direction. You want to slide to a stop. So the force is going to act in the opposite direction. So perhaps the atoms are further apart. I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. But uh, in any case, at this point, the, uh, the atoms are repelling each other in the opposite directions, and it slows you down. So how about a lubricant? So if you add a lubrication, like oil, what happens? So now you got, instead of two sets of atoms, shoe and grass, now you got the lubricant in between them acting as a middle atom, a middle agent atom. 
and the uh, lubricant atoms are free to move. They're not stuck in structures. They can actually move. Where the uh, atoms in the grass and the shoe, well, if they move, they have to break off and become little bits. And uh, that doesn't happen very often. But here, uh, if you repel the, uh, the lubricant atom, it's going to move out of the way, and so you slip. So it causes a slipping hazard. Okay, so um, atomic summary of friction. Friction is actually due to trillions of tiny electric repulsions between the protons at the atomic level where atoms almost collide. The protons are stuck in a crystal structure or some other kind of structure, and so they, uh, the object must move or the atoms must break off, like tire skid marks is where uh, atoms are actually breaking off and fusing to another surface. Okay, electrons repel each other into um, high-energy orbits, and they're attracted back by their protons. This causes an electromagnetic disturbance or a photon to be radiated out, and this is how friction generates heat. So that's why when you uh, rub your hands, it's getting hot, You're making some radiation. Okay. And um, number three, in static friction, uh, inertia must overcome to propel an object. So during kinetic friction, inertia must overcome to slow an object. And perhaps atoms are further apart during kinetic friction. Who knows? Uh, I've never read that anywhere. Just a guess. And um, it's kind of like though when you have your fingers on the uh, the piano keyboard as they're sliding along, you know they can keep sliding. But if you stick your fingers into the keyboard, uh, now they're stuck there. You got static static friction. Lubricants reduce friction by providing middle agent atoms, which are uh, free to flow. And lubricant atoms are not stuck in structures and can move when repelled. Hence, they are slippery and provide slip hazards. So, actun, attention, cuidado, be careful, there's a slipping hazard. Okay, so here's an atomic summary of, of uh, friction joke. So, uh, from this book down here, Physics for the Inquiring Mind, there was this uh, joke where um, the scientist claims, as a joke, that demons cause friction. So, um, basically, it's really atoms, but he just calls them demons for fun. So, explain static friction. So, this person pushes the book, demons push them back. They don't want to be crushed by the book. How about kinetic friction? Well, if you push too hard, the demons know they're going to lose, so some of them run away. And so now you got less resistance. This is supposed to explain why kinetic friction is uh, weaker than static friction. Okay, so uh, how about heat? Well, uh, if you did overcome the, uh, the demons and crushed some of them, then the other demons will, uh, they're cannibals, so they're going to cook those, uh, those dead demons and have dinner and then use the energy to repopulate. So that's why the friction doesn't disappear. Uh, lubricant, well, it's really hard to push back when you got water or oil and you have to swim in and push at the same time. Plus, maybe some of the demons don't do well in swimming. Okay? So there's overall less friction. How about uh, air and water friction? Well, they, that's just uh, flying demons or swimming demons, and so they have uh, different amounts of friction compared to solid demons. So as you know, this is definitely a joke. Uh, atoms cause friction. It's, it's not demons. Okay, so the coefficient of friction, mu, uh, describes how easily surfaces stick or grip or slide when in contact. So it is part of the friction formula, force formula, F uh, friction equals mu Fn, normal force. Very low friction is around 0.1, and strong friction is close to 0.9. Okay. So uh, the only way to find mu is to perform thousands and thousands of trials during uh, lab experiments. So here's just a few values down here, like wood on wood, 0.2. Um, rubber on grass, not known. Rubber on ice, 0 0.005. Cartilage inside your, um, inside your body, 0 0.0003. Extremely slippery. There you go. So here's an example problem. Uh, what's the acceleration on a 60 kilo runner using static friction um, of 0.95 to accelerate from rest to 8 meters per second? Okay, so this uh, runner here is uh, normal force up, gravity down, they cancel out, so we'll ignore them. And we got static friction propelling the, the chogger forward. So we got F equals MA. The only force that matters right now is static friction, which is mu mg equals MA. So the M's cancel out, so it doesn't matter uh, what the mass of the runner is. It's unnecessary information. So your acceleration is the coefficient times G, gravity. So in this case, 0.95 times 9.8. The uh, jogger's going to accelerate at 9.31 meters per second squared. So uh, we want to reach a speed of 8. Subtract 0, our initial speed. Accelerating at 9.31. 
So it's going to take 0.859 seconds to accelerate and reach our top speed. Here's a second example. We want to slide into base. So uh, we want to find the coefficient of friction. So this is a backwards question. So we're going to um, slide for 10 meters, starting off at 8.5 meters per second, and come to rest, which is zero. So if they don't tell you, that's what it is, it's zero. So um, zero squared, subtract 8.5 squared, 2a times 10. So we're going to be decelerating at 2.4083 repeated meters per second squared. And then we're going to use that to find the force. So the only force that matters is the friction force. Normal and gravity cancel out. So uh, F is equal to negative force of friction. It's a negative because we're slowing down. And so that's negative mu mg equals ma. So once again, the m's cancel out. They're gone. And so the coefficient of friction will be the acceleration divided by negative g. So negative 2.4083 repeated divided by negative 9.8. Coefficient of friction is 0.246. So the coefficient of friction between a player and the ground is around 0.246, or very moderate. Okay, so in summary, atoms, the friction force, like the normal force, is due to trillions of tiny electric repulsions. Static versus kinetic. Static friction is stronger and used to propel, accelerate, and provide traction and grip. Kinetic friction is weaker and only occurs when objects are sliding and it opposes the velocity and attempts to slow objects down. Heat. Friction generates heat. Uh, no friction? Well, if you want to see what it's like to have no friction, check out this uh, episode by the Magic School Bus where they play baseball without friction. So I hope this helps with your uh, understanding of friction. Good luck.